My name is Tom Rechtenwald, and I want to be Kentucky's next U.S. Senator. With this video, I'm announcing my entry into the 2014 Democratic primary for U.S. Senate. If you'll follow me throughout the campaign on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, I think you'll want me to be Kentucky's next U.S. Senator as well. There's something really wrong with the way we finance campaigns these days. Whoever collects the most dollars seems they always get the office. Take Mitch McConnell, for instance. Mitch already has many millions of dollars in his bank account for his next campaign. And I read just the other day that a some Republican super PAC has announced that they'll spend $50 million, if necessary, to ensure that Mitch... That a promise doesn't guarantee change, but if you don't even promise, if you don't even mention it, if we can't even get Allison Lundergan Grimes to talk about, say, like the Glass-Steagall Act to be able to regulate the financial industry, if she doesn't even mention the Glass-Steagall Act, um, being in support of it or being in support of the uh, Employee Free Choice Act, um, you know, the EFCA, Employee Free Choice Act, Employee... Free Choice Act, EFCA. So that was uh, the union fucking based, you know, thing where anybody can be unionized. If you're in a union, you can all become part of a union. That was what Employee uh, Free Choice Act was all about. So is she in favor of these things? If she never mentions it, if she never says, you know, if she promises, she could lie. But if she doesn't even promise it to us, then we have... You know, absolutely, we can't we can't blame her. We can't say, hey, why didn't you do what she told? Well, I never told you that I was going to pass Glass Steagall or give a shit about the Employee Free Choice Act. I only wanted to fucking win, and I just talked about the least amount of shit that I could. And since she's running the Republican, they're going to, the idea of running to the right of the Republicans and pandering to the racist, bigoted fuckers that they're you know that they pander to is very present and very obvious. Let's hurry up and let's pander to these assholes, but let's not run to the right. Let's actually be a true person, a principled Democrat who stands up for what's right regardless of, you know, what political points it might cost you. She's taken on some issues. She's pro-abortion and pro, um, you know, a woman's right to have an abortion and, and, and against domestic violence. So she's for some of these progressive issues, which have generally been um, not popular issues to run on, but um, the, she could be more progressive. So let's run down the uh, the ten point plan of Gregory Brent Lichty, uh, the main viable candidate who's running against Allison Lundergan Grimes, gets reelected. Now I don't know about you, but I think those big dollar donors are going to want something in return for all those big dollars. For instance, when it comes time for Mitch to vote on some issue that's important to those big big donor guys, he's going to take care of them. Forget all about us average, everyday Kentuckians. Now, I think I have a better dollar figure in mind. Zero, not a zilch. I won't accept even one dollar for my campaign. That way, when I'm elected senator and important issues come up for a vote, I will be able to vote my heart as an average, everyday Kentuckian, not be indebted to any individual, group, or organization. Now, it seems too often that when Kentucky is ranked against the, all the other states for this or that, that we're always at the bottom. Gregory Brent Lichty is a professor from the University of Louisville. He's, I assume he's been in Louisville for quite some time, been teaching in Louisville. He's running in the U.S. Senate race against Allison Lundergan Grimes and Tom Recton Wald and um, some other person. There's four people in this race, Burl Farnsley, Tom Rechtenwald, Greg Lichty, and Allison Lundergan Grimes. So you got four candidates in the Democratic primary on May 20th, 2014. So Gregory Brent Lichty, here's the, he's got a 10-point plan. At the very beginning, he wants to pass the Glass-Steagall Act. Let's pass Glass-Steagall Act, separate regular banking for the citizens from investment banking. Right? So let's separate the banking. When you have people giving all the money to these regular banks and then the regular banks are using that money to invest in this and then that, they can speculate, they can invest in something that's bad, then all of a sudden that bank goes under and then all the good common people's money is gone and there's runs at the bank and then we'll have, you know, like back in the 80s when you had the, 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 the loan, you know, the fucking savings and loan place uh, debacle under Ronald Reagan. You know, Ronald Reagan was like one of the shittiest fucking presidents ever. 
He passed the fucking war on drugs, which is devastated. You know, it's the new Jim Crow. That's why you have so many people that's in uh, prison right now. Um, he bombed people in uh, uh, fucking Latin America. He gave Bin Laden his weapons, right? So he created Bin Laden. Um, so, And then he, they gave him credit for ending the Cold War, but really the internal... Uh, collapse of the Soviet Union is what did it. But who gives a fuck about the facts? Let's just, you know, put Ronald Reagan up and deify him, right? He spoke to us so well, the great communicator. Anyways, so bullet point number one, Greg Lichty, Greg Lichty out of U of L, out of Louisville, Kentucky, he wants to pass the Glass-Steagall Act, okay? Glass-Steagall Act, let's have regulation on the banks, let's uh, separate investment banking from regular banking. Number two, he's going to be a trust buster, just like um, Teddy Roosevelt was. He's going to go after the monopolies, he's tired of the big fucking trust, uh, all these monopolies, these corporations just taking over everything. There's uh, corporate monopolies when it comes to the media, there's six corporations that owns like all the media, Microsoft, Walmart, there's lots of uh, corporate monopolies which needs to be busted. So, pass Glass-Steagall. Be a trust buster. He's, he's big time anti-war. Oh my God, his write-up about the war is incredible. I hope that I still... Yes, okay, so here it he goes about um, the war. This is in his own words. So, I will exercise due diligence on any proposals to commit American forces to combat on foreign soil. It should be our policy to avoid picking winners and losers in civil wars in foreign countries, especially when those societies have profound internal sectarian divides and entry into the situation inevitably involves taking sides. Defense spending, defense spending is primarily for defense, not supposed to be for offensive operations abroad. The United States has a larger defense budget than the combined defense budgets of the countries, ranking from 2 to 8 in defense spending. So out of the biggest countries in the entire world, we spend more than the top 9 countries combined. That's how much money we spend on defense. And before, the, it was called the Defense Department. It used to be called the War Department. So they just covered up the idea that it's an aggressive war machine. But if you can um, murder people under the guise of defense, and you're allowed to murder as many people as you want. So, the... Um we should not aspire, nor can we afford to continue to serve as the world's cop. I will strenuously advocate for the removal of our troops from Afghanistan if they're not all withdrawn by the beginning of 2015. So very strongly anti-war as such. We should carefully rethink what kinds of forces and budgets we need for national defense. We should review our current force structure and very carefully scrutinize costly weapon systems such as the F-35 fighter. That may cost us as much as $1.5 trillion over the next 20 years. I would also seek a comprehensive review as to which of our bases overseas can be closed or reduced in size so as to save money. So the American Empire, we're, you know, we got 150 military bases, overseas military bases in 900 countries. So people don't talk about the amount of aid that we give to the countries. A lot of that aid is just to finance our own occupations and our own troops and our own soldiers and other people's lands. We're still in Germany. We're still occupying Japan. I'm pretty sure we got fucking um, Toto and um, um, Hitler. But I'm not for sure if we got, uh, you know, everybody else. I don't know. 150 fucking military bases in 900 countries. We're a fucking empire. That's fact. You know, we've been in empires, empire since 1898, since the Spanish-American War, when we took Cuba and took um, Guam and Puerto Rico in, I want to say Hawaii and the Philippines. So we was able to uh, occupy all those countries. We got those territories. Those are our colonies. And when we started colonizing, that's when we became an empire. It's also interesting. It was under McKinley. And McKinley is the one who got shot. So maybe Americans are against their imperialist presidents. I don't know. You had Teddy Roosevelt right after that who did the Panama Canal and was just happy to fucking bomb and invade anybody. So that's okay. So number three, he's anti-war. Okay, so that's a big-ass thing um, that we're getting out of Lichty. So Greg Lichty, he's, he wants to pass the, the Glass-Steagall Act. He wants to um, pass the uh, um, uh, bust the trust, and he wants to be against the war. So those are three incredible issues. Right now, so far, that's better than Allison Lundergan Grimes are very near the bottom. But let's us average everyday Kentuckians do it differently this time. Let's be the leaders. Let's show Mitch McConnell and the rest of the country as far as that goes that it doesn't have to take millions of dollars 
to win a senatorial campaign. Now, I have to depend upon you. I can't do this by myself. The only way it can work is through these kinds of social media. I need you to, to support me. I'll need your vote. But more importantly, I need you to contact all your family, friends, email contacts, Facebook, Twitter, whoever, however you communicate with people. I need you to contact them and tell them to visit me at trforsenate.com. And you need to tell them to keep it going. We need for this to go viral. You tell your friends, ask them to tell their friends, and on and on and on. I will put... Continuing on with his 10-point plan. I'm actually just going to read them down in the list so I can get through this. But he's going to pass the Glass-Steagall Act, which separates regular banking from investment banking. He's going to be a trust buster, right? Um, he's going to be he's big time anti-war. Wants cuts in defense spending. Wants to shut down military bases, and he wants to use that money and save it and invest in America. It's a great idea. It'll save trillions of dollars. Number four, another major one. He wants to go after the NSA. He wants to check out the Patriot Act, the FISA courts, the National Defense Authorization Act, NDAA. Um, he wants to spy on the stop, Big Brother police surveillance state. He needs to be a, put a check on it. And he says at the very least um, to discuss right where it is. We want the balance between freedom and security. Number five, he wants to end the economic embargo in Cuba. He wants to end, you know, the economic embargo in Cuba. So that's incredible, right? That's a very progressive position. Um, Cuba right now, is, since they're communists, we've had this embargo against Cuba for like 50 fucking years. And that's why Cuban cigars are so expensive here. Um, if you can get us Cuban cigars, right, that's like when you make something illegal, the price goes up. Um, so we have an economic embargo on Cuba right now, so if there, Cuba did try to trade with us, then there could be war issues, right? You, there's an embargo. You cannot trade with us. So they've been trying to choke Cuba out for about 50-something years. Um, they're trying to do this shit with Iran. They try to do it with Iraq, and essentially what happens is you devastate the internal population, and a lot of innocent people die um, just because you don't agree with their economic system. So they're not enemies. They're not uh, military attacking us. We are not threatened by Cuba. Um, and we also have our fucking prison base down there. So let's let's you know since they're hauling, and they're keeping all of our goddamn fucking um, prisoners. Maybe maybe we should be allowed to fucking trade you know some bread with them every once in a while. So number six, he's pro minimum wage. Um, Ralph Nader he talked about tying the minimum wage with inflation, which I think is a brilliant idea. Um, he's also pro Medicaid and pro Social Security. So this is all good stuff. Pro minimum wage, right? That's not. That's what Allison Lundergan Grimes is going on. Not that um, heroic, but it's an important um, trait. Pro Medicaid, pro Social Security. So he wants to keep the social spending that the United States government spends a ton of money on, while trimming some of the military budget. And this is exactly this is right. Um, he, number seven is the federal renewable fuel standards, uh, especially as it relates to videos up every couple of weeks or so for a while. Uh, more often as the as the campaign gets toward the end, probably. And I can't wait to tell you with this, in my next video how I learned the secret to success in the very first hour of my very first day of my very first year of school as a five-year-old back in 1952. I'll send out a tweet once that video is posted. So, again, just to remind you, sign up, for, especially for tweets, and I will advise you when there are more videos there, and I need your help by spreading the word. Let's make it go viral. Make it go viral. Again, my name's Tom Rectonwall, Kentucky's next senator. Thanks for your support. I approve this message. Issue of um, Lichty's, Greg Lichty's. He wants to have federal renewable, renewable fuel standards. He wants to check them out. The fuel standards, renewable fuel, because he wants, to, especially in relation to ethanol. Ethanol. He sees potential with ethanol. And um, and wants to do something different with the regulations. That's the renewable fuel standards, the RFS, which I never heard about. So he introduces that. He wants to reform the tax code. So he wants to do it this way. He says, "I will push for legislation that treats all income as equal for tax purposes and wipe out the current distinctions between capital gains and wages. I'll push for expanding the tax base through curb and deductions, the multiplication of deductions in the federal tax code since 1986." has led to an inefficient and unfair tax system. Tax reform will serve several important functions. It will enable us to dramatically simply 
uh, to, to simplify the tax code, it will enable us to reduce the tax compliance burdens on industry and individuals. It will enable us to lower marginal tax rates. The United States now foregoes over $1 trillion annually because of the exemptions in the tax code. I propose that 75% of the additional revenue that could be raised by reducing deductions be shifted to delivering overall tax rates. The remaining, uh, remaining 25% would be utilized to reduce the annual federal budget deficit as well as secure the future of Medicare and Medicaid in the face of our aging population. Number nine is pro-carbon tax, pro-taxes. So he's for carbon tax to have less emissions. He's environmentalist. And then number 10, he wants to overturn the Citizens United. So the idea of having super PACs and unlimited money put into campaign uh, finances, he doesn't want to do that. 